We'll kick things off with an emotional exclusive from ESPN Brazil. Richarlison struggling after the World Cup, after shining so brightly for Brazil in Qatar. His numbers, though, show how his form dropped off domestically. And he gave a very frank and honest interview about his mental health after the World Cup. Já queria voltar para casa. Eu queria voltar para o quarto, porque, sei lá, não sei o que estava dando na minha cabeça. Não, não sentia mais. Eu cheguei a falar para o meu pai que, que eu ia desistir. O que eu passei assim, depois da, da Copa do Mundo e descobrindo coisas aqui dentro de casa de pessoas que conviveu comigo mais de, de sete anos, tipo, é loucura, velho. E, e chegar para o meu pai, onde foi o cara que que correu atrás do meu sonho assim e falar que pô pai eu quero desistir é é coisa de louco tinha acabado de disputar uma Copa do Mundo pô, no meu auge então é eu tava chegando assim tipo no meu limite mesmo sabe eu tava num quase isso né numa depressão ali tipo sei lá e tava querendo desistir velho sei lá é, so, tava sofrendo muito ataque depois da, da Copa e junto com esse problema pessoal dentro de casa, afetou muito. Afetou, tipo, nunca... Logo eu, tipo, parecia que era forte, assim, mentalmente, sabe? Depois da Copa do Mundo, parece que desabou tudo, velho. E só querendo não salvar vidas, velho. Eu tinha esse preconceito antes, eu falei na entrevista que eu tinha esse preconceito antes. Eu... Achava que era frescura, né? Frescura, achava que eu tava doido, achava que... É, da minha família, minha família mesmo. Tem pessoas que acho que... Quem faz, é, vai pro psicólogo acha que, que é louco, acha que é doido, mas eu descobri isso e, e achei maravilhoso, a coisa melhor, a melhor descoberta que eu tive assim na, na minha vida mesmo. A raw and emotional interview there from Richarlison, very much championing those struggling with mental health to go and seek help. As we welcome in uh, Jürgen Klinsmann. Jürgen, what, from a coach's point of view, when someone's injured, obviously, it's all about are you fit, are you ready to go? When it comes to mental health, how difficult is that to deal with when you're trying to get your team going, getting you're trying to get the best team out there when you've got players who are clearly struggling? Well, it's probably the, the biggest challenge for all managers, coaches out there, is to understand in which uh, yeah, mental conditions the players are day in, day out. And you deal with, uh, on the top level, with 25, 26 uh, highly paid professionals, and uh, uh, all of them are different. All of them are very, very different. So I can absolutely feel for Richarlison what he went through, uh, especially after the World Cup. I was there myself. I saw them play. I saw his beautiful goal, first of all, and then I saw mm. him go out against Croatia in a drama game. And uh, this hits you very, very hard. Uh, I went through an experience like that in the 94 World Cup in the US. We lost in the quarterfinals to Bulgaria. And I was destroyed for months, for months, because I, at that point I had five goals. I thought maybe I got to win this thing also as top scorer. Um, so this is, this is very, very um, important nowadays, you know, to understand their mental uh, condition, to understand what's going on in their private lives, to understand what's going on in their public lives. Uh, the generation of today, it's really n nothing to be jealous of because they go through a lot, a lot of emotional uh, issues day in, day out. Now with social media, obviously the whole world judges you. Um, mm. The environment changed. Uh, it's a lot different to what we experienced maybe 20, mm. 30 years ago. When I took over Germany in 2004, I uh, introduced a sports psychologist to the team and they called me crazy in Germany because it was not their, their way of solving things. Well, that sports psychologist is still today <laughs> with the Federation, thanks God, um, because they can read things better than, than we do. You know, we go, uh, basically our school is, from, ma from a manager point of view, is, uh, is, is the game. You know, we study the game day in, day out. We try to figure things out uh, between people and try to manage people. Um, obviously, the words, you know, uh, man management, as Stevie often says, you know, is very, very, very important nowadays. But you cannot see it all as a manager. You cannot see uh, what goes on behind uh, the doors uh, with your players day in, day out. You know, maybe something personal happens in the background, something in the family, something uh, that we don't even know. And, uh, and therefore, definitely, I 
support every step from the Richarlison to seek uh, to seek help. You know, to talk to professionals, to open up, uh, which he did. Thankfully, he did. And I would encourage every player, every athlete, to do so because you know they're human beings, just like uh, everybody else. And and you have problems, and and you have to solve those problems. And often these players uh, are left alone because obviously we think you know they're machines. They can go day in day out. They can play every three four days. And and it's not the truth. The truth is they are vulnerable. You know they're fragile, and uh, you have to. To read that, hopefully ahead of time. In his case, hopefully you, uh, he goes and, and asks for some help, some support. Uh, therefore, this is a, a very important topic, and it's in all sports uh, that way. If it is in, in basketball, American football, baseball, any sports, especially individual sports, it's more and more important that we can uh, understand their mental uh, state of mind. Uh, Jürgen, it's interesting. You mentioned 1994 <laughs> there. Just going into a little more detail, if you don't mind about it, it must be such a strange sensation in that you've fulfilled your goal, you've gone to the World Cup, you've scored goals, the game that you love, the game you've grown up wanting to play, and then all of a sudden it's associated not necessarily to all positive things. Yeah, you go through these extremes, you know, extremes, highs in, in terms of you think you are in that tournament, you... I mean, I scored five goals until the quarterfinal. I thought, you know, I have a good chance. You know, the top uh, was then six goals. We had actually with Germany in that World Cup an extremely, really good, good team. You know, we had uh, the addition of the East German players joined us after the, the reunification. And we were overconfident. We were in a certain way. We were too arrogant then to win the tournament. But we had quality-wise probably the better team than 1990 when we won the World Cup. Um, and then when you get that shock, you get sent home by another nation. Um, and uh, they just gave you a better game, um, then it's really difficult for you to comprehend. And you go fly back, you know, to Germany or wherever, maybe on vacation, and you try to understand what, what did really happen. Um, and it's, it's, it goes deep. It goes deep in you. And so what Richarlison felt, and I watched every Brazil game in Qatar. Uh, I mean, they did exp until that defeat against Croatia. For mm. me, Brazil was the best team in Qatar. Um, because they were a step ahead of Argentina in that moment, we we're talking about you know the quarterfinals then, um, and France, and so e everyone feels then pain differently. Obviously, we are all different, and some players then you know they go they go too deep then in their frustration and they they get into a depressive mode, and uh, and you gotta under you gotta read that you gotta understand that. But you know as the national team manager then also it's not you not living with them day in day out. Mm. So their family needs to be there, their friends need to be there, they need to understand what's, what, what's really happening now with, with uh, such exceptional athletes. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're just very, very normal people, simple people, and they need help. And I'm really, really happy that he asked for help and he got the help and he pulled himself out of this uh, dark moment and, uh, and is back in, in, in very, very good shape and, and, and plays wonderful football again. It must be a strange sensation because you want to play, obviously. Mm. You, you know, you, you, want to, you want to fit out there, you want to be as part of your team, yeah. but you know in the back of the head like you're not, right. you're not where you should be. You spoke about this in your book. Yeah. Like with, with, when Hillsborough happened, yeah. something that you kind of put deep, deep down, but you realised you weren't quite the same player that you wanted to be. And the good thing about today, not only Richarlison coming out and others before him mm. talking about this sort of thing, is that every club has a sports psychologist. And it's almost, or it should be almost for a coach, like going to the physio and asking about somebody's injury. You as a coach should be going to the psychologist and saying, right, where, where is, where, where is Richarlison or any of your players? Is he in a position where he can play? Is he in a position where playing him is going to help him? Or does he have to just have a week off? Right. I mean... That's what you should be doing as a coach. I, I, I really think right now it's similar to any other, any other of your staff that you would go to to try and fix a, a, a situation. Unfortunately, now that option's there for players. I 100% can tell you that we should, after Hillsborough, have been given the option yeah. of, of having counselling. But A, nobody brought it up. And B, more importantly, there's not a player then in that, at that stage would have, would have had the courage that Richardson's just shown mm. to tell somebody and sit and 
sit in front of somebody with tears in your, in your eyes explaining how you feel and how you want to get better. That option wasn't there. So I think we're lucky that for people like Richardson right now, that option's there. And fortunately, they're taking advantage of it because all it's going to do is help them. Jürgen mentioned it, and it's interesting because obviously you look, look at finance, oh, players are getting paid more than they ever have. Is there an argument to say they're under more pressure than they have been because of social media, because the spotlight is always on? Uh, absolutely, and I think social media adds, a different, adds another layer to it, but that pressure's always been there. And, and to be honest, pressure is a part of the game, and we almost wear that um, as some kind of a badge on, on, on our sleeves because of, of how we've dealt with it over the years. And to get to, to get to this level of the game, you have to be able to deal with pressure. You be, you've dealt with it all your life, albeit in different ways. As, as a young player coming through, it's, it's that margin between success and failure. Am I good enough? Am I not? Um, you get yourself through that. And while we've all had these kind of ups and downs in terms of our own mental health and, and dealing with the pressures of the game, more times than not, we get through it. So the, the, the belief is, just give it a little bit of time and I'll get through it. But as, as you get to the levels, particularly, um, you, you heard Jürgen speak about it, Richarlison speak about it, when you're at a tournament like the World Cup, and it's not just about your own successes and failures, but you're carrying a, a, the expectation of a nation on your back, of all the people that you love, all the people who've contributed to your career, all of a sudden, their own mental health, you, you feel you're carrying. And any kind of failure is, is just compounded, compounded by it. And it's, it's oftentimes too much for one person to bear. And while some can, can grin and, and, and work their way through it, others, it, it takes a more damning effect. And credit to Richarlison, again, I, I agree with Stevie fully here, it's important that players who are going through these moments call attention to it, to let young players, mm. let others in the game, at whatever level it may be, know that they aren't alone, that their situation is not unique, that they have to come out and seek help. At the same time, I, I, again, credit to the game for making sports psychologists or psychiatrists a part of, a part of the setup. Because in the past, that was a coach's job. And a coach is not, a coach one is not trained to do that, not trained to diagnose or speak to players about it. Secondly, a, a coach has to pick who his best team is to go out and win a game, because that's where his mental health, that's where his successes are hinged. But the last thing that Richarlison or anybody in his position needed at that moment is to be left out. Right. And now all of a sudden, as a coach, here you are not trained to deal with it. You are trained to, to put out the best team on the park, and all of a sudden, it just adds to the issues. So, again, it's, it's, it's good that the game is moving in this direction. It's long overdue, and hopefully young players can take some heart from the direction and the bravery shown by Richarlison and others, others. You were talking about pressure, Shaq, and they may just say, well, hold on a second. This is the sort of pressure that you have to deal with if you're going to play for Brazil or you're going to play at an elite level. You just, just look at it from the perspective that from a lot, of, a lot of these players, where they come from, their real pressure has been putting food on the table for their families. That the fact that they made it to this point, there is a whole line, long line of people in their family that depend on their success. And so when we talk about pressure and measure pressure, let's think about it this rationally from the perspective of a guy like Richardson or whoever it may be. Look, my real pressure is putting food on the table mm -hmm. for my family. And I've been able to do that. So I've handled that. I know what pressure is like. I know what it feels like. That's pressure. That's pressure, not knowing where your next meal is going to come from. And we're out of that. So it's not so much about the pressure itself. It's about dealing with the disappointment of what were the expectations, your own expectations, the expectations of a country, the expectations of everybody around you, of those long line of people that depend on you not being able to deliver on those expectations. And that is the, it's the thing we all play to win. Our, uh, what fueled us was the competition and to win. And when you don't do that, it hits you and it hits you hard. And to the point that these guys were making and that Jurgen was making that now this is available in the game, what's also important is that it's no longer taboo to talk yeah. about it and that it's becoming more normal to talk about it. That it's actually, I cannot imagine 
and I, I, I'm, I don't go nearly as far back as Stevie or Shaka, but I cannot imagine a locker room, even in my time, getting up and actually talking about the fact that you have mental health issues. It was taboo. It was a sign of weakness. It was a sign of, of a guy that you cannot trust. And the guy who actually spoke up and would say, I have issues with mental health, you don't trust that guy anymore in the locker room. Right. You turn your back from that guy and say, like, nope, this is not a guy that we can carry into the game because we don't know what, how he's going to react. The fact that he, players like Richarlison are talking about this makes that tag of being taboo kind of go away and normalizes the conversation. And I think it's important, like critically important, a point that it's, it's already been made. The presence of a sports psychologist whose profession is to deal with yeah. your mental health, which was not the case for us. That was not the case. The first time that I ran into a sports psychologist in, in, a, in, a, in a soccer environment was with the national team. And even that was a little bit like, when I would go and talk to them, because you have to talk to the sports psychologists, they make appointments. For, I, I was guarded about right. it. I, I, you know, I, I don't know that I trusted the situation and the process itself. So the more normal it becomes, more players are going to be more trusting of the process of the person that they're talking to, opening up, putting their emotions out there so that then I can now go and perform on the field, which in the end, I, it's what truly matters to most people, that you go and perform. And how do you go and perform when you free yourself of this pressure?